I want to cover a little bit about scraping of the saddle and cross slide on the Myford again. A little bit uh, different this time. So what we're looking at here is a, a flaked, scraped job. Top of really a ground finish. And I put together the cross slide here with the gibbs. On the Myford you have two gib blocks. And um, altogether six screws that push on the gib blocks. From the top here you can see the four screws that hold these two gib blocks in place. And uh, the saddle, dovetail, normal construction from the on the side. You see the scraped finish also. I, I just scraped these areas also just for for looks really. Oil grooves, oil feed holes. This one from the side, that one from the top. Clamping down, holding the saddle in place. Five screws here to hold the apron. So forth. Uh, the screws here, the four screws, they go into a gib here, which I have taken out. And uh, show you later how I adjust this, because now what is important is that saddle when mounted together with the cross slide like this on the bed itself is at 90 degrees to the bed of course also flat in that direction and runs then uh, what is it perpendicular to the axis uh, with within tolerances the amount of I never remember if it's concavity or convex let's say concave and that's so that you produce a dish so it's a little bit tilted inwards like this this I have done by or this can be achieved by scraping in this case the uh, this um, saddle is the um, guides on the front way this is a narrow guide principle since this one has been uh, scraped a little bit so that you have that that concavity this one is now really just uh, air so used as reference <coughs> the saddle is of course um, rough scraped then uh, finish scraped it shall be tested and tested on the bed first on the plate and everything but on the bed so i blew it up here Wiped off, put the saddle on, testing, <clears throat> and uh, it's a good match, I would say. So then you can proceed and this uses the narrow guide so there is room here while it's stuck here so I'll pin it down to the bed here and then I'll adjust it with the cross slide running here <coughs> the way I do the testing now um, for perpendicularity or concavity or at least on the cross slide and saddle to set up the saddle really is to measure against the flat here which this is just a lazy method of of uh, a more professional made test apparatus which makes you can pivot and you can control with two screws Instead, I'm, as usual, very lazy, so I'll just screw the chuck on, and then I've um, ascertained that this is 
flat by rotating this around to measure at each side so that I know this is flat there and then I put it's important to snug this um, this rear down with um, the holding horse here so at least to a certain point and then I just snug down a couple of these screws on the front here and depending on where I am I will insert shims here or here to align this so that I read zero here now I have no shims there but I've scraped let's say I insert here so I, if I find that that's let's say five hundreds of a millimeter needed to get it uh, all uh, lined up I need to scrape on that side the same amount in this case I scraped here because I inserted shims here and it was about three four hundredths of a millimeter so now I just find a kosher spot here there I guess like that I know my end travel should be like from this to this okay and I said this is the way it's supposed to be no slack so I go here roughly And then I snug up these screws, couple at least, and then we'll watch. The and I can adjust here the zero at the far end here, and um, shouldn't be a lot too much play, only a hundreds or two, and then I. We'll move this and I see I'm still same here not much movement I'm here I am about I said zero there five hundreds out now move in a zero and now if I Put in a shim of um, this is three hundreds. Here, and then zero again. that so it's about one one hundred so here I am scraping the cross slide sorry the saddle I put it onto the cross slide and tested on the bed and found out that um, for instance this is the way it's supposed to be but absolutely no no slack um, tested it and found out that this was a little bit low uh, I'll show you later how I do that so this which now is on the the, uh, the rear guide here this must go down on this side so the way I do that is that I step scrape it from here to here so I divide it now in my head at least in 
one, two, three, or more, and then I s scrape this uh, not at all, one time and two times. However, I like to put a relief in the middle as well. So the important thing is here that to do that, you have to scrape, of course, even harder here. So there's a, not much, but a little bit low there. And there's one more consideration also, namely to scrape harder at the inner uh, here, because it's a tendency to to drop it a little bit to the outside here. So at least I learned it's you have to make an effort to scrape to the inside here. I leave that alone and I scrape here. So I scrape from the other side. And the thump thump is of course me going into the side there. But I have relieved this by making a groove here as certain that this groove is high enough or that this is thin enough so that I will enter the groove so it doesn't matter. So now after a couple of cycles of scraping you can see it's improved to the point that we have about 100 or so and uh, we have about one two a little bit like not too much slop we have to have a little bit so i think that's that's the right we can just a little bit less on all here 